Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. So for those that don't know, in Omniscience Drafts you get to draft 3 packs as usual, but there's a twist. You don't have to pay the mana cost for spells you cast. No need to put lands in your deck. You have to still play a 40 card deck of course, which means that we basically have to play almost every card we draft. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. We also get 5 mana every turn for activated abilities. So even though we don't have lands, cards that have certain uh, activated abilities can still be fine since we get 5 mana per turn, also in the opponent's turn. So activated abilities on creatures are still serviceable and uh, get to start with 3 cards in our opening hand instead of 7. But no need to pay mana costs for cards. So card draw spells are at their best here, since we get to very quickly basically draw our entire deck. There are some combos that can let us win the game on turn 1, if we have the right combination of cards. So let's give it a shot. Alright, pack 1, pick 1. Open some nice ones. Risen Reef, of course, still great in this format, since that means that any elementals we play still draws a card, and that card's going to be a spell. And we're often going to end up with a bunch of random elementals. Winged Words, draw 2, is great. It's better than Risen Reef if we don't have any elemental synergies to follow it up with. The Warlord is actually a pretty good mana sink too, since we can play it and then use that 5 mana both in our turn and the opponent's turn to make a 1-1, and that starts ending up. Still gonna take the card draw spell over the Warlord, but if we didn't have a Risen Reef or Winged Words, Warlord would be pretty good, I think. Uh, how good is Icon of Ancestry? Probably not amazing. Like, it's okay, it can find us elementals with the 5 mana every turn, but it seems a little slow. Uh, anticipates also excellent, just a cantrip that can find us the draw 2 effects, so that's also definitely a card we would uh, take highly. A Risen Reef or Winged Words I think is a consideration here. We'll try it, Risen Reef. Well, I'm not seeing a ton of card draw in this pack, so this one's pretty weak for Omniscience Draft. Weaponsmith not all that exciting in this uh, format. What do we have instead? I guess like Silverback Shaman as just a big dumb creature, draws a card when it dies, probably better than the Ripscale Predator, probably go with the Silverback still. Alright, there's our Winged Word, so that's an easy pick here, anything else that's better. Soul Salvage is probably still serviceable, but definitely worse than a Winged Word. Not our Silverback would be okay, let's take the Winged Words. Ooh, Scampering Scorcher to go with our Risen Reef can potentially let us win the game on turn 1, because it also gives all elementals haste. If we just play a bunch of big elementals into Scampering Scorcher, we could attack with a bunch of hasty creatures, so that's great. Um, anything else in the pack? I guess if we get enough Fairy Miscreants, those could be fine. Mind Rot is probably playable, but you need to be on the play for Mind Rot to be at its most effective, otherwise your opponent's almost always going to be empty-handed, so then it's uh, not doing much. But yeah, love the Scorcher here. Alright, I guess I could start picking up those Fairy Miscreants now. Anything else in the pack? So it's like Miscreant versus take a random big creature, which in this case could be like Necromancer, Squad Captain, Fire Elemental I guess is okay, as it has a bit of synergy with the Risen Reef too. So it's between the Fire Elemental and the Miscreant. Like we know there's one Miscreant that could potentially wheel, so if we get enough of them, then the Miscreant could be valuable, especially considering we can get the Miscreants on the wheel pretty often. So in a pack like this, for example, if there's like 3-4 cards left, and one of those is Miscreant, that's actually an exciting pick, whereas if we just have to take like a Undead Servant or an Anvil Rod Raptor, we're going to be pretty sad in future packs. So this one's close. Uh, Fire Elemental, pretty decent alongside Risen Reef and Scampering Scorcher. Miscreant potentially pretty exciting. Any chance we can wheel the Miscreant out of this pack seems unlikely, but not impossible. I guess we'll still take the Feral Mantle here. Is Disenchant good? I guess the um, two mana enchantment that draws a card whenever you target a creature. Season of Growth is one of the better cards in the format, so Disenchant being able to kill those is pretty decent. Wands can be activated every turn, so it's not the worst. God's Willing to protect our big creatures is actually pretty good too, but it's not like people are going to be playing a ton of spot removal in the set or in this format, so 
it's less irrelevant than it would be normally. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. We can only activate Sephir Charge once a turn since we only get one blue mana. Yeah, it's not as good as being able to give two creatures flying per turn. So I guess it's not as good as I thought. Alright, people like Disenchant. Alright, well now we could maybe consider the Fairy Miscreants. Soul Salvage, uh, the other consideration, Healer synergizes with the Risen Reef. Otherwise, probably still not great. So it's between Miscreant and Soul Salvage. Skeleton, also playable if we need a filler creature, since we can pretty easily get it back with the 5 mana we get every turn. People still like the Soul Salvage. I guess like Aerial Assault as removal, or Brawler as an elemental to go with the Risen Reef. Probably still go with the Brawler. Brawler into Scampering Scorcher can also do quite a bit of damage. Since we get to attack with a hasty Brawler that gets plus 4 plus 0. How good is Unholy Indenture? Seems kind of weak. Let's take the Brawler. Alright, we wield the Anticipate, so that seems good. Convolute's pretty bad when they can just make 5 mana every turn. And got the Rip Scale back. Probably better than the Healer of the Glade. Now I can consider Scorch Spitter as an elemental to go with a Risen Reef. Otherwise, probably like Wolfkin Bonds, which is probably better overall. Now I can consider between Mind Rot and Squad Captain. I think the upside on Mind Rot is probably high enough that we should take it over the Captain. Uh, nothing here that's exciting. I guess we could end up with a bunch of Undead Servants, and then they become playable. Otherwise, Inspire Charge is a pretty mediocre trick, but I guess has a bit of synergy with the Scampering Scorcher too. And I think I'll still take the big creature over the Zephyr Charge here. Alright, got Healer as our last pick, could be worse. Alright, what did we open in this pack? Any card draw effects? Uh, Raptor seems pretty bad, since the mana discount doesn't matter, and would end up killing a lot of our creatures. I guess Bone to Ash is fine. Counter a creature draw card is pretty good, so technically card draw as well. Yeah, Bone to Ash seems like the best card here. Overcome otherwise could also be okay alongside the uh, Scampering Scorchers, or Overgrowth Elemental as another elemental. Can hope to wield those. Executioner, probably playable. It's basically a removal that leaves us with a 1 1 spirit. Um, not our soul salvage. There's Sea Serpent as just a big creature. Although getting to 7 mana is going to be tricky for the ability. Yeah, we don't have any removal yet. I don't think removal is all that important in this format. Would rather be more proactive. I think I'll take Executioner, seems better than Rabbit Bites. How good is Chandra? It uh, seems pretty good. We can get back our Winged Words from the Graveyard and our Anticipates. Don't see anything too exciting. I guess Kelden Raider, discard a card, so we can improve our card quality a little bit. But uh, yeah, I don't hate the Chandra. Plays well with the Anticipate, plays well with the Winged Words, Soul Salvage. There's some cards to get back and hopefully we get more Winged Words to synergize with it. Blade Brand Cycles, so that's the only real card draw spell. Unsummon could potentially do some interesting things with creatures that have Enter the Battlefield abilities. Imagine having Risen Reef into Scampering Scorcher and then unsummoning our own Scampering Scorcher, that could be fun. So probably between Unsummon and Blade Brand. We seem to have quite a few creatures, so having a target for Blade Brand shouldn't be too difficult. Says Unsummon better than just drawing a card on average is what we have to ask ourselves. I think drawing a card is probably still better. Like outside of Risen Reef we don't really have a ton of sweet Enter the Battlefield triggers going on. Like Bouncing Executioner make an extra 1-1 is not too exciting. Let's take a Blade Brand. And of course a tempo advantage from Unsummon doesn't matter when the opponent can replay their creatures for free. It's mostly to synergize with their own creatures. So something like the Gyre, for example, is okay if we can get value from our own creatures and can potentially open up an attack for lethal, so it's better than unsummon in that way, of course. But uh, unless we're winning the game that turn, it doesn't accomplish a whole lot. 
that being said, there's not too much else in this pack. I guess negate is fine. Just countering the opponent's card draw might be better than the gyre. So I think I'm leaning negate. Counter the opponent's card draw spells. Speaking of which, probably just take another one. Seems better than anything else in the pack. Alright, finally some more card draw in the form of Audacious Thief. Not as good as a Winged Words, but uh, might still be okay. Uh, not much here other than maybe Brawler, Veil of Summer. I guess Veil of Summer is pretty good, since most people will be playing blue card draw spells. So at the very least Veil of Summer cantrips, it can protect us from mind rots from the opponents. We can't cantrip in our own turn most of the time, but the upside I think is probably higher than Brawler. So what's the best creature? Probably the Aeronauts. Now I can consider Plummet for opposing flyers. I can consider Healer on the off chance that we get more Risen Reef synergies. Uh, Smuggler seems pretty mediocre. Could take another disenchant. I guess Plummet might still be serviceable if we end up playing against some flyers. I guess Smuggler plus Thief is fair. That's a good interaction. So maybe Smuggler's not as bad as I think. People are probably playing the Angelic Wings quite a bit, so... There will be quite a few flyers out there for Plummet to kill. I'll, I'll take the Plummet. Now, Kelden Raider seems excellent, just replacing a bad card with hopefully a better card. I guess we don't have a ton of big creatures to eventually win the game, so another Stone Golem could be fine. And I guess Fire Elemental is fine. Alright. Well, hopefully the last pack gives us some more card draw effects, since we're kind of low on them now. Well, I guess Angelic Gift cantrips. Probably still better than Ambusher. Although Ambusher's not bad. There's also Miscreant in case we ended up with a few, but we don't have any Fairy Miscreants yet. I think we could have had two in the deck if we took them early, but I don't think we wield any. I mean, Ambusher's not bad, like, once we empty our hands, if no one manages to completely combo off, it can eventually start making some tokens. Every card you draw, you can play off the top. So unless you draw into like some reactive negates or bone to ashes, then it's going to be awkward to not do anything. The thing is, like, we don't have a very high density of card draw effects in our deck. So it's going to be difficult to set up those scenarios where we draw half of our deck on turn one, unless we get lucky and open up with like Risen Reef into Scorcher. So having random draw one effects are less valuable than they would be in a deck that has more card draw effects in general for that uh, combo potential. So maybe just taking an above average creature in the form of Ambusher is better than taking a cantrip. Like we're probably wheeling the gift as well, whereas we're probably not wheeling the Ambusher. And there's not another card in the pack that I'm too excited about. So that's also part of the reasoning. Yeah, I guess Force Claw is also a consideration just as a big creature. That's also an elemental for Risen Reef. I'll try the Ambusher. <laughs> well, Dread Presence is not going to be great without any lands. Uh, so what are we looking at? Anticipate, Angelic Gifts, Howling Giant as just a big dude, Thief. Like, Anticipate is probably the best cantrip since we get to dig the deepest. Thief would be better if we can connect with it multiple times, but we don't have any smugglers to make that happen. Could also hope to wheel Anticipate and take just a random creature here, which would be the Howling Giant or the Thief. But we, we might wheel the Smuggler too, in case we pick up more Thieves, I don't know. I'll take the Anticipate for now. It's another Soul Salvage. <laughs> Rule of Law. <laughs> Rule of Law is actually pretty funny. If you can play turn one, like empty your hand, play Rule of Law as your last card. Points limited to casting one spell per turn. It's actually pretty decent, but it also affects us, so there's a bit of a drawback there too. So this, this card is definitely powerful in this format, but it's arguably also bad for us. So what are we taking if we don't take the rule of law? Like Vampire, Soul Salvage, Aerial Assault, all these cards are pretty weak. Now let's try it for the memes. 
Kelden Raider looks okay, Angelic Gift, Cantrips by itself if we have a creature in play. Which is better, a Cantrip that requires a creature that can get blown out by removal, or a creature that gets rid of a bad card in our hands, and our deck has plenty of bad cards, so being able to discard and draw with a Kelden Raider is pretty good. Yeah, there's a chance we wield the Kelden Raider, there's a chance we wield the Angelic Gift, can't say for sure. Probably still take the gifts. And what do we have here? Not Anticipate seems pretty straightforward. Alright, Creeping Trailblazer is a mana sink, and we have a decent amount of elementals. Anything else that stands out? Could just take Fire Elemental as a big dude, which could just be better than Trailblazer. Although Trailblazer can potentially be bigger than Fire Elemental with enough uh, creatures in play. Smuggler to go with our one thief that we have so far. Probably still favoring the Trailblazer. Now I can take my Vorse Claw as our big creature that's also an elemental. Probably better than the wands. I guess never mind, Befuddle Cantrip, so that's actually also a consideration. Ah, uh, is it better than Vorse Claw? Probably. I would like to pick up a Vorse Claw at some point, but I guess I'll Befuddle. Ooh, Season of Growth. Eighth pick, very last pack. Makes me happy I took the Befuddle now. Plays great with the Angelic Gifts, Blade Brands. So that's a pretty nice pickup. Hopefully we can wheel all those Angelic Gifts that we didn't take earlier. Easy peasy. I guess Wolfkin Bond might actually be playable now with... Uh, Season of Growth, better than Soul Salvage, probably. Let's take a Wolfkin Bonds. Uh, probably still Kelden Raider over the other Wolfkin Bonds. Got a Disenchant already. I'll take a Kelden Raider. <laughs> well, this could be relevant. Oh, never mind. We can't even cast the Tectonic Rift to begin with, since there's no target in play. So I guess uh, I'll take an, a Yoked Ox. Right, smuggler to go with Thief seems better than Healer. And a Wand. Alright, so I get to make a couple of cuts here. Which means Yoked Ox is gone. Chaplain, one of our weaker cards. I'm not sure if I'm liking the rule of law, to be honest. We might be shooting ourselves in the foot. Inspire charge is also cuttable. Aeronaut's not exciting. So these are kind of the the weaker cards in the deck. So Rule of Law could be effective if we, like, combo off and play this as our last card, so the opponent can no longer combo off and hopefully we're enough ahead on board to win the game. So that's the idea behind Rule of Law, which I could buy, but it could also potentially be pretty bad if we draw it late, or if the opponent goes first and already has a ton of stuff in play, then this doesn't matter a whole lot. So, like, Chaplain's probably the weakest here. And then it's between these last three cards. Healer's probably still better than a random Aeronaut since we have a Risen Reef. Yeah, I guess I'll still play the Rule of Law. Wand is not exciting, but at least it deals one damage per turn. And worst case scenario, we can use our own Disenchant to destroy it to deal five damage somewhere. So I still think we can probably play the Wand. All right, we're on the play. I guess this is a keep. All right, I guess I'll go with the Risen Reef. Kelden Raider, discarding Thief. Or I could discard the Veil of Summer and just play Thief. Feels like I can get more value out of this Veil of Summer, though. All right, well, not the most exciting uh, turn one. But if we draw any more elementals, 
we could be fine. Uh-oh. Alright. So I could always decide to cast a Veil of Summer to Cantrip. Since your opponent did cast and anticipates. If we feel like we need to just draw a card here. Bottoms. Yeah, I feel like we just Cantrip. Ribjaw is bigger than Kelden Raider, but Kelden Raider potentially draws us into more exciting stuff, so I think we'll still play the Raider here. Right, let's see if we can find some more exciting cards. Winged Words, I guess. Over Bone to Ash. Chandra, alright, Chandra's nice. Can get back the winged words. Is that better than anticipate? I think so. Alright. What are we giving flying here? Probably the stone golem. Oh yeah, I could have also just made two tokens with Chandra to draw two with the Risen Reef. Yeah, that was a mistake. Should have just uh, made two elementals since we had the Risen Reef in play. Forgot. Could have had a Chandra with more loyalty. I guess we kind of fizzled here. Can cast a Wolfkin Bond. What's best place to put it? Like, it's pretty important that we protect our Chandra here. <laughs> All right, well, fair enough. Let's make some elementals. At least I can cast Anticipate in the opponent's turn. Ambusher. Nice. Alright, so messed up a little bit there. Should have just used Chandra to make two elementals. But uh, didn't get uh, punished. Sweet. Alright, so far so good. Alright, a counter spell, an anticipate, and then a card that doesn't do much. I guess we'll keep. I guess I should anticipate for Bone to Ash here, shouldn't I? Anticipate for anticipate. <laughs> Alright, let's keep anticipating, I guess. Alright, I guess I'll take an Angelic Gift. Oh no, <laughs> one card deeper, and we would have had it. We do have a Plummet in the deck too, which could kill something. I guess I'll gift a Spider. Alright, and then I'll play the Thief. And then probably wait on the Wolfkin Bond in case I draw a Season of Growth. Eh, probably just want to draw my card here. Uh, and that can deal with the spider. So we're not too far behind depending on what our last card does. Do I Wolfkin Bones now? I guess I do. Mm, 
no creature to get back. Alright, so... We're slightly ahead here. Ooh, Herald of the Sun could potentially be scary. Rule of Law not looking great. So now what? I can start by attacking. Draw my card from Thief. I guess I'll send both 4-4s. Four Go full control in case I draw a random instance that I can cast. Uh, Silverback doesn't count. So you get to... Play Silverback. I could get back Thief, but I think I want to wait on the Soul Salvage. Since the Shaman is somewhat likely to trade off. And I don't think casting Rule of Law is in my advantage at the moment. Uh-oh. Well, that's uh, potentially very good. I guess I should attack with everyone. Alright, that's the worst case here. Get in for six, not draw any cards. And unload. So I could rule of law here. The idea being that if I'm ahead on board, I could win the game. Let's see, end of turn they get to activate heralds. Points at six, so if they don't play any more creatures, then technically I could kill them next turn. And I don't want them deploying more cards from the Dragon Mage trigger, so I think it's in my benefit to cast rule of law here. Negate can counter a removal spell, if they played in their turn at least. And yeah, let's see if we got there. I could have kept the spirit back, but the one damage is actually relevant here. Mask. Yeah, I think that's a must counter, basically. That's the only card they can cast for the rest of the turn, so this should be game. Yeah, they can attack, they can draw seven cards, but rule of law. I guess if they draw into an instant that they can cast during our turn, they could still survive. But we have another negate, so that should have everything covered. But yeah, if they drew into an instant, they could still have cast it in our turn. But the negate uh, covered that as well. Alright, that was a close one. Mm, this hand is pretty awful. This might be a mulligan. Like, I can imagine this hand being okay for opponent goes like turn one season of growth. And I get to disenchant it, but nah. Alright, this is much better. Hang on to anticipate and then probably befuddle. Pretty funny doing the London mulligan with only three cards. Yeah, it's a dig for a negate, I guess. They have their own negate. Oh, their own anticipate. Well, they kept a pretty good uh, two cards here, anticipate and a winged words. Well, I did find a negate, so I guess I'll counter that. <laughs> Not anticipates. All right. So they've got one card to work with. Abomination. That's acceptable. Another negate to draw. Let's cycle this. I guess I can do it in the opponent's turn. It's probably better for now. Blade Brands. Probably cycle that end of turn as well. I guess I can wait. See what I draw first. Bone to Ash. The upside of Blade Brand is that if I draw any creature, I can trade it off for the Abomination. But I might just be able to string together some card draw spells and get pretty far ahead on board if the card drawn from the Blade Brand is uh, good. I think I'll wait for now, but it's close. Like, the fact that our deck doesn't have a ton of 
two for one card draw effects means that cantripping is less exciting. Definitely happy to bone to ash there. All right, so if we can find a risen reef, we could be in business. Also, just scorcher plus blade brand means I can trade off for the abomination. Start with anticipates. All right, nothing exciting here. Place Scorcher. It's going to be a bit obvious that we're holding a Blade Brand, but so be it. I want to keep Scorcher back since I have Soul Salvage in my deck, in case I can get him back. Play Stone Golem. Also, technically, this represents a double block, so our opponent doesn't necessarily suspect Blade Brand. But the plan is to single block with the Scorcher and then Blade Brand. That's fine. This card's on summon. Alright, happy to make this block. Ooh, season. A bit late to the party, since we've already cast Befuddle and Bladebrand, but still pretty good. So we get to play that into Executioner. Scrying towards those winged words, or um, rather those angelic gifts as well. Thief, what do we think of Thief? It's okay, because I can Executioner the Raider, and then Thief attacks into the Vampire. It's not the best draw in our deck, but it's also not the worst. I think I'll keep it... If your opponent draws a random big creature, then the, the thief doesn't look great. And I did get to scry one twice, given that I also made a token. So I could have been a bit pickier with the top card here, potentially. Thunderkin, anything to get back. Cloudkin Seer. So that's actually pretty good here. Probably still killing it. And then just trading here. Ooh, Scholar of the Ages. That's pretty backbreaking. And Unsummon plus Scholar is kind of a, an infinite loop almost. So I need to keep the negate to counter the Unsummon. This card's Pattern Matcher. Yeah, Scholar is definitely one of the best cards in this format. Ouch. Well, that's game. Unsummon the Scholar, replay Scholar. Scholar gets back on Summon. And they can basically draw their entire deck if they want to. So yeah, that escalated pretty quickly. We were about to draw a Thief, but it had one draw step. And uh, they managed to turn it around right away there. Alright, this hand seems fine on the play with the Mind Rots and Anticipate, so... I'll lead with Anticipate. Gets negated. You have no cards. I'm left with an Angelic Gift. Their two cards weren't even that good. Alright, it's kinda nice. I want to give the Ambusher flying, but I can't ambush with the flying Ambusher. So I guess I'll just play it out right now. Yeah, extra flying. Could have held on to one gift to give a token flying, but that would have taken a few turns. How about a plummet? So I want to attack first and then plummet in the opponent's turn so we get the wolf token. And I can upkeep it or I can wait until end of turn. I guess I'll upkeep it since I probably want to kill the angel. 
and do this before they draw a card. Could have waited, not sure. Right, they didn't negate anyway. But if they would have drawn the gate for the turn, then maybe it's better to convert a plummet there. I don't know. It's not like the angel's doing much. Yeah, negate's not a bad pickup. Think I can afford to race. I'll get another wolf token. I can double block the predator. That also works. So drawing these uh, counter spells with an ambusher in place pretty nice. No thanks. Trailblazer doesn't do a whole lot. I think we're better off just making a wolf. Serpo and falls to four. They've got one turn to top deck out of it here. All right, we got there. So we traded some resources early on. Mindrot's got the opponent's last two cards. And then Ambusher kind of stole the show. The format seems slower than some of the previous Omniscience drafts, so you actually spend more time passing the turn back and forth, and then the Ambusher can accumulate value, plus we have a few instants that play well alongside it. So this format is less about comboing on turn one, whereas it's still definitely possible. It just doesn't happen as consistently. And what about this hand? It's pretty reactive with the Veil of Summer. Chandra plus Veil of Summer, not the best combo. If we draw into a Lank and Anticipate, then the Sand could be pretty strong. I don't know, I've, I've got high hopes for the Veil of Summer. So I'm gonna try it. My turn one's gonna be pretty unexciting, but Veil of Summer has a lot of potential, and then it doesn't take much for Chandra to become a great source of card advantage. Well, I like my chances against the Mulligan down to one card. So I'll lead with the Smuggler. Alright, that's a pretty good one. Well, hopefully we can find a cantrip here. Soul Salvage, not quite. Say hi to my fiery friends. Don't think I'm sacrificing the smuggler. Get in one point. Basically the same as if I were to make one token unblockable. Opponent's got an effect end of turn, maybe. Nope. A Feral Invocation. It's definitely possible I should not have played my Chandra and just kept her in hand until I found something to get back from the graveyard. Although I kind of wanted to pressure the opponent as well there. And our opponent's just going face, so they're ignoring Chandra, which could potentially come back to bite them. And a Crasher. Well, I guess they could potentially just kill me next turn. Although, there we go, we're off to the races now. Anticipate in two. I guess I'll take the Silver back here. Need some beef in play. And plays well with our Soul Salvage. Let's anticipate again. Remember this one? I guess Befuddle just as a combo trick could be fine. Or I could Wolfkin bond my Silverback so it becomes a bit bigger, put more stuff in play. And then play Silverback. And pass a turn. Zephyr charge. Well, that's actually a problem. I mean, I guess it resolves. I could befuddle, hope to draw into a negate. I could have cast Veil of Summer to hope to draw into a negate. Maybe that was reasonable.
I would not have drawn the negates. Do I Veil of Summer right now? I guess I'm kind of in a hurry here, since I'm just gonna die next turn if I don't draw anything. So I think I should just cantrip. Disenchant. Well, that kind of works. I can disenchant the charge, and then I'm back in business. can also disenchant the invocation to just take two, but I think I'm gonna have to deal with the charge long term. So I'll just take four for now. And there's negate. Also I have disenchant plus one, which can take out one of the opponent's creatures. Let's try this. Yeah, I like to think on my feet. And then say go. And then try and double block. We can soul salvage back some creatures, hopefully. And negate to prevent any blowouts. Stone Golem. Point says go. Executioner, great pickup. So nothing to soul salvage back at the moment. Let's just get rid of it now, I think. Risen Reef could be a problem. Sadly, the Executioner exiles itself, so we can't get it back with the Soul Salvage. Safer Point just plays a bunch of creatures here. There's not much we can do about it. Kelden Raider. Well, opponent's pretty reluctant of trading for the Silverback for good reason. So I could see just discarding the Soul Salvage instead here. Um, maybe want to attack first, although I could draw something relevant with the Raider. Hang on to the Negates. But yeah, I could have attacked first, because then our opponents, if they do trade, I can soul salvage. If they don't trade, then Raider blocks Stone Golem. So it would have been reasonable, but seems unlikely for the opponent to want to trade here. Wolfkin Bond is a decent pickup. That seems okay. Just hit them for seven, that's a two-turn clock. And the Spirit can get in there too. Could have also put the Wolfkin Bond on the Spirit token itself. Also putting it on a Trampler. Does have some upside. Plus, we don't really mind if the shaman dies. Gonna negate as protection. Yeah, the spirit's just chilling on the ground for a second. Bone does go for a block. So, presumably, a combat trick. Maybe a burn spell end of turn. Which I could negate. Disenchant the Wolfkin Bonds, which would kill the Shaman as well. I think I'm fine uh, negating that. Creeping Trailblazer, well, that plays well with uh, Risen Reef. That's a redraw. Alright, things could get out of hand. They can also activate the Trailblazer, which would give it plus two plus two. So a bit more toughness. That's fine. So they've got two blockers. Trailblazer can go up to seven toughness. So they're not dead. Find our own Trailblazer. Our Trailblazer is a bit weaker than the opponent's. They could also decide to take nine, keep Risen Reef in play, in case they can top deck some more elementals, which is probably their best chance here. So I expect Trailblazer in front of Silverback, activate, and then take nine down to one. Alright, double block, silverback, I guess that works too. How does our opponent win the game if they're at one life with just a trailblazer in play? I think we have a better chance of losing if we let them keep the Risen Reef. So I think I'll kill the Reef here. So not a play I expected them to make, but I think this basically reduces their outs as opposed to just keeping the Risen Reef in play.
All right, did they draw out of it? Brawler doesn't do it. All right, so they get to attack with a Trailblazer, but they're pretty dead and we're not taking lethal, so... Whatever. Double block. Well, opponent would have drawn an elemental with the Risen Reef in play had they blocked differently, so who knows, had they made a different block, they might have been able to string together a bunch of elementals to win the game. Pretty unlikely, but probably gives them a better chance than uh, saving the Trailblazer there. All right, so far so good. We're four and one. All right, well, this hand is just a bunch of beef. No real cantrips other than the Kelden Raider if we're willing to discard, but I mean, all these cards are kind of good. Shaman draws a card when he dies, Raider could cantrip. We're on the draw, so if we get mind draw, that's, that's not great, but we also get to flash an ambusher in the opponent's turn and potentially attack for four or ambush like a haste creature. Blade Brands, go digging, Spider. So I think I'll play it now. I guess if they have Bone to Ash, then I could have drawn into a Negate. All right, there's the Angelic Gift. I guess they have a Spider too, so Angelic Gift by itself actually isn't enough. If they respond with a removal spell on the Ambusher, we're going to be sad, but there's not too many they can have here. So I think I'll cantrip first, see what we draw. Could also play a Silverback and then put a Gift on the Silverback. Since a 5 power creature can actually attack past the Spider. Maybe that's better. Another one. I guess everyone gets to fly. Could actually be worse in the face of plummets, but... A <laughs> rule of law. I think I'll discard that one. Alright, well, I've got a game plan here. Try and trade off some creatures and... Get ahead with Soul Salvage. For now we're just gonna make some wolf tokens every turn. Unholy indenture the spider. But Befuddle's a pretty nice uh, pickup. So we expect to see a double block. It's probably better to still kill the spider here. And then Befuddle... Don't know if it matters. I'll Befuddle a spider. Veil of Summer. Wow, that's a pretty... decent one for them to have. Although Plummet isn't bad, I might as well wait. Don't think I'm soul salvaging back a single creature. Well, Season's potentially very scary. Although if they put some enchantment on the Dawning Angel, we could punish them with plummets. They still get to draw the card, but at least the indenture's gone. We're probably just passing the turn to get the token, I can anticipate in the opponent's turn. Maybe I should upkeep this, in case I find disenchant, I get to kill the Season of Growth. Thing that makes sense. Oh, there's a disenchant. Seems like the pick. Alright, season down. Well, the disenchant has definitely delivered so far in this draft. So for now, just making some wolf tokens every turn. 
blade brands could be nice, but I think we just hold it for now. Could allow me to trade off a weaker creature for the spider, but we're not in a hurry. And every wolf that we make is a pretty big advantage. Could always scantrip the blade brand in the opponent's turn if we really want to draw that card. But blade brand's pretty useful here since we don't have much removal for the spider otherwise. Bone to Ash, pretty good alongside Ambusher too. Alright, so we're happy passing the turn once again. So block plus Blade Brand seems okay. I could block with a Keldon Raider to make my Soul Salvage better, but probably still better to trade off a Wolf. I could just double block with two Wolves, but probably does something in response, and then I still get to Blade Brands. I guess I like that the most. Make the opponents make the first move here, and then respond with Blade Brands. Because if the trick they have is some sort of spot removal spell, Alright, God's Willing. Could have maybe blocked with Kelden Raider plus a wolf. That way God's Willing would not have uh, done much, but that's fine. Executioner is pretty good too. Could be time to start attacking. Play Executioner, get rid of Spider. So I could play Kaldan Raider first, which maybe baits out the Bone to Ash. Although I'm not sure what I want to discard here, since all my cards are pretty good. Maybe just discard the Blade Brands. Keep Soul Salvage. Would have been pretty tempting for them to Bone to Ash the Raider. I could just hold the Blade Brand, I don't have to discard here. How good is Blade Brand long term? Could still be useful, I think I'll hang on to it. Let's get a big attack in. Opponent's down to 10. Yeah, gotta watch out for those planar cleansings. Soul Salvage is a pretty good way to recover. Aerial Assault, not much we can do about it other than casting Blade Brand, hoping to cantrip into a negate. We have two negates left in the deck. I think I'll let that happen, and then we can just Soul Salvage back. Uh, they're gonna cantrip their own Blade Brand. It is nice to keep the Ambusher in play, because it has a flying enchantment on it. So that would have been the major reason to try and dig for Negate, but chances of finding the Negate aren't very high, and the Blade Brand could still be useful. So our opponent's not quite dead on board. They could easily have a negate in hand here for this Bone to Ash. Veil of Summer. Yeah, Veil of Summer is a good card. The Force Claw will resolve. We still get to draw our cards though, since it's not like the Bone to Ash got countered. So our opponent's getting kind of back into the game here. Don't have any amazing attacks. They're considering an attack with the Abomination, so that would be pretty aggressive on their part. They do go for it. think I'm happy taking it. Step one is probably to attack with everyone and then Blade Brand if they block. I could have cast a Soul Salvage first to get back Ambusher. That would have been fine just to pump the Wolf Tokens, which could have potentially given me lethal here. But if we expect them to have instant speed removal, I don't know. I guess it would have been fine because then they don't have the removal for the Blade Brand targets. But they might also have like a Negate in hand. Right, Befuddle's pretty good there. But our opponent is down to one. 
We'll start with Fire Elemental. Gets Bone to Ashed. If I soul salvage back the Ambusher, I can still flash it in end of turn, so I could potentially beat Planar Cleansing that way. So I think the plan is to just go for it here. Alright, we'll see what happens. Points at 1. Gets in there. Do need to make sure we don't die to a random uh, Uncaged Fury here. This seems relatively safe. That's fine. If they have like a Pulse of Morassa, they could potentially gain some more life. Eh, another Bone to Ash, so they probably drew that for the turn. Alright, Negate should seal the deal. I guess I'll go with Risen Reef. And all Angelic Gifts. Probably the Keldon Raider. Alright, that does it too. Don't need to go through a combat step here. If they have a Pulse of Marassa, they have to cast it now. Uncage Fury, so they did have the trick. Alright, GG's. Alright, well, that was a close one. It's possible I messed up by not uh, soul salvaging the Ambusher pre-combat. There were definitely reasons to play differently there, in case our opponent survives and we want to soul salvage back something else, but yeah, not bad, 5 and 1, let's keep it up. Alright, well, this hand's got a game plan, which is uh, hope that the thief survives. Uh-oh. Season, that's a scary card. Would love one of those myself. That's a powerful start. They kept the card on top, so it's probably a cantrip for season. Draw two cards. Yeah, opponent's kind of going off. Befuddle, draw two cards. Our deck is capable of doing something similar, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good here. Oh boy. Well, I guess we died on turn one here, basically. Opponent gets to draw four more cards, at least. Alright, five cards in hand. Invocation for the redraw, they've drawn almost half of their deck already. Even if we get an untap step, I don't think we're surviving for long. Our deck isn't really capable of beating this kind of start. Gruesome Scourger. Alright. Six creatures in play. Bone to Ash their own Scourger to draw a card. Going deep. 
And there we go, unsummon the Scholar, so they can loop those indefinitely and draw their entire deck. So should we concede or do we let our opponent uh, play it out here? Alright, well, if they're gonna mind rot me, that's kinda rude. Then I'll concede. I was tempted to let them play it out, but now... Now I'm over it. Alright, so we're 5 and 2, let's try again. Alright, we're on the play, our hand's not very good. Uh, since we can't even cast a Blade Brand to begin with, or the Wolfkin Bonds. Negate's not bad though. It's definitely an above average card in our deck. I think I'll mulligan. Well, this hand is probably worse. But at least we're getting, gonna play some creatures to start with. Don't think I'm going down to one. Just play Ripscale and a Trailblazer and hope for the best. Would rather get the Trailblazer countered first. Opponent had a slight pause, so they probably have the Bone to Ash here. Could be Anticipate too. So the fact that they didn't anticipate in response to the Trailblazer makes me believe they don't have a Bone to Ash in their deck. Alright, Sea Serpent can attack past it with a Predator. Unless they play another creature. But yeah, Season of Growth, definitely a pretty impressive card in this format as well. We haven't really been able to take advantage of it yet, but we do have one in the deck. Yeah, let's get in there. Howling Giant's pretty good at stabilizing. And lets them scry one three times. So they probably find whatever they need, so we're pretty far behind here. Keeps a card on top, that's bad news. So what do we need to draw here? I guess Angelic Gift would still be decent since then the Predator can attack past the Howling Giant. That's one way to close out the game. Veil of Summer not so much. I guess uh, I'll Veil of Summer to counter your Thought Distortion. It's the perfect foil to their 7 mana sorcery. Pick up a Negate. And Abomination. Alright, there's the Angelic Gift we were talking about. Season a bit late to the party, but I'll still take it. So we'll attack for six. And play season. So you go. Ooh, Spectral Sailor. Now that's a scary card in this format. Also allows them to double block the Predator, but mostly the card draw here is scary. They're probably gonna take six at least, and then next turn, if they don't find anything useful, double block the Predator. And hopefully we can find some more cantrips with the Season. I guess a Wolfkin Bond would be pretty decent right about now, since that would force them to double block and would save the Predator as well, as well as drawing a card. Alright, Ambusher's not the worst, although... Doesn't really help us in this situation. Opponent's gonna draw before we get a chance to attack. Still think we need to make this trade for the Sailor. The correct play from their perspective is probably still to just take it. I guess they would die to a pump spell. That's what they're thinking about, or a burn spell. They do go for the double block. Gotta put the Sailor first. Alright, so we've limited the card draw from our opponent a little bit. We're still pretty behind on board. 
but not by too much once we play the Ambusher. And yeah, we'll see which player can top deck better with a Season of Growth in play. Put in bottoms. Another Denizen. So already on the mill plan here. Plenty of cards remaining. They're even fueling a potential soul salvage. Abomination gets in there. So I could just double block Stone Golem and Trailblazer on the Sea Serpent, bump Trailblazer, trade Stone Golem for a Sea Serpent, that seems like a good trade, and then just take 5 for now. Don't even have to pump. Alright, something good, Kelden Raider. Kelden Raider's not terrible. But this negate is also pretty valuable, so I don't know if I want to give up on the, the negates. I guess with the Season of Growth, the non-creature spells our opponent would cast at this point are mostly pump spells, and that would not stop them from drawing cards from Season. So the negate doesn't have a ton of value. I think I keep it. Like, I don't have to cast a Kelden Raider here. If I don't want to, I can just make a token instead. But we are kind of uh, desperate to find some action too. I can probably wait. And yeah, Wolfkin Bond is pretty good. Even has synergy with the Ambusher, so plays great with the two cards we have in play. Bag of Holding. Is that worthy of a negate? Probably. This will eventually draw them a ton of cards. Alright, so we kind of get to go off here. Wolfkin Bond's probably the Trailblazer, since that could potentially, with an Angelic Gift, pick up Flying and then deal more damage than a Wolf or an Ambusher. Once. Point is at 8. Uh, Fire Elemental. It is an Elemental for the Trailblazer, but it doesn't have Flying yet. I'll bottom it. And now I could discard the wand, or I could keep it and try and ping them out. I think I'm discarding the wand, I think it's going to be too slow here. And then we want to scry before drawing. Chandra, it's got to be good here. Mm, actually not great. It does let me scry a bunch with the season. So it's not the worst actually. And then I can probably eventually find something to get back. But for now there's nothing uh, that would be too useful. No. Too bad. Brawlers, mediocre. Soul Salvage. Seems okay. Yeah, I'll keep a uh, Soul Salvage. Can even cast it twice with the Chandra still in play. Don't really want to trade Trailblazer for Abomination. So I'm just gonna... Say go. No real point in attacking with the elementals when I'm empty handed. Ooh, another spectral sailor. It's the second one, jeez. Well, that's a problem. Point's gonna mill me. That makes sense too, since we kept the card on top. Although now Ch Chandra can actually get back the soul salvage. So it's actually not too bad, although. Some good cards here. A gift bond would have been pretty excellent with the season. And a winged word's gone too. So this game is pretty intense. Could go either way. So what's my play next turn with Chandra? Soul Salvage can get back. Kelden Raider plus some other random creature. Getting back the winged words could be better. Uh oh, Risen Reef. Would love one of those myself. Yeah, our opponent's deck seems pretty good. Double Sailor, Risen Reef. I'm kind of hoping they mill over Risen Reef, because then I can get back Soul Salvage with Chandra and then cast uh, Soul Salvage getting back Scorcher and Risen Reef. Could be pretty exciting. But yeah, it's going to be hard to compete with the Spectral Sailor drawing two cards per turn, basically. Alright, I'm gonna have 16 cards remaining. 
Yeah, drawing cards now with Risen Reef could actually be bad. Kind of close to getting milled out. So I'm not sure how we're supposed to win this game. I guess Soul Salvage can get back Hanged Executioner now as well. So that can answer the Spectral Sailor. But opponent gets to dig so deep with all these cries from Octoprophet and Season. I guess I'll start with an Anticipate. Did they keep a negate on top, maybe? They did not. Rule of Law seems pretty bad when we're behind. Not sure if we have anything relevant left in the deck. Plummet can kill the Spectral Sailor too. Start there. Right, so that works. So I'm guessing Soul Salvage is the best card to get back. I could get back Smuggler as well. Smuggler plus some two-powered creature could break the board stall. I could get back Executioner. Thief could draw me some cards. 11 cards remaining. I could just cast the Winged Words here to draw two, but I'm guessing Soul Salvage is going to be better. So Executioner has got to be one of them. It's kind of awkward that we've got the Ambusher pumping the wolf, so Smuggler doesn't actually make anything unblockable. But I think long-term Smuggler is probably still the way to win. Come on, Chandra, remember that spell. Disenchant can kill their Season. Is it too late for that? It might be. But I think I'm still going to keep it. The Lavakin somewhere at the bottom, I think. I think I'm still keeping the Disenchant. Like, it could be wrong, and I, it's possible I should just be ignoring the opponent's season. But technically, I could still win a longer game here if they don't mill me out. Don't think we had any good attacks. Well, now we're probably just getting milled out. I suppose I could have exiled one denizen in response here with the Executioner. Don't know if that's going to matter. So we're at the bottom of our library here. Yeah, also Trailblazer would pump the Lavakin Brawler, so I would have to trade this off before we can make that unblockable with the Smuggler. So it's kind of rough. If I drew the Disenchant, then I could have uh, Disenchanted the Wolfkin Bonds to make Trailblazer unblockable, but we never got a chance. So I guess I could still do that. Just minus Chandra Disenchant, Wolfkin Bonds, how much does this attack for? Don't have any other elementals in play, so it's only going to hit for 4. I guess I'm going to draw the Healer. Yeah, let's take my turn then. If I play Healer, I'll have 2 elementals in play. So Chandra can disenchant the Wolfkin Bonds, pump Trailblazer after making it unblockable, hit them down to 4, and technically I would have a 2 turn clock. Oh, never mind, that doesn't work. Yeah, I have to pay for the disenchant from Chandra, so then I won't have the mana for the Trailblazer, but that might still be the play. So get back, disenchant. Disenchant my Wolfkin Bonds. Didn't think I would uh, make this play. Beta 2. Remember this one? Play Healer. I guess I can wait on that since I'm not uh, actually gonna pump. Get in for 4. Hope we're not that too damaged on the way back here. I don't think we are. Gets bone to ashed. Alright, well, let's find out if we're dead. So if they cast a blue creature, I can respond with Executioner, so I don't get milled out. Epicure is not a blue creature, so that's fine. And 
the next turn Smuggler Trailblazer plus the Spirit Token would be four. Oh no, Natural Land. And it's gonna gain them three life. I will also draw into the Fire Elemental. So that's one extra Elemental for the Creeping Trailblazer. So I'll have two Elementals. This gets in for four. One Spirit, I guess two Spirits. It's gonna be close here. Yeah, we have six damage here. Can put them to one. I don't think I need to execution or anything. I'll just take my draw step. And yeah, I'm just gonna play the final mental. And then pump this. Put them to one. It's possible I don't have to attack with all the spirit tokens or just all the spirits here to keep more stuff back. Let's do a quick count here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten attackers. I think we're fine attacking here in case they somehow gain more life or produce a blocker. I think I'm attacking. This way, the single spirit token is lethal by itself. So if they play... Ooh, Angelic Gifts, all right. Opponent gets to draw two cards unless I execution or the Epicurean response. If they draw into a blue creature, I die just to the denizens. I could still survive a blue creature here since I have five cards remaining. They would mill for four and I would draw my last card and potentially win. But the risk of them drawing into more answers is pretty high. So I think we do need to get rid of this. But yeah, if they draw into a blue creature here, then we're dead. Befuddle for the redraw. They get two redraws. It's a lot of redraws. Did they get there? Anticipate. <laughs> Keeping the suspense here. All right, they probably have it within anticipate here. They can probably draw into a blue creature to win a game here. Well, we got pretty close, all the way down to one. It's definitely possible we missed the damage somewhere. Or we could have played differently. Nevertheless, pretty exciting game. Blood for Bones. Yeah, that should do it. Just get back a blue creature from the graveyard. And that should seal the deal. Well, we almost managed to beat double Spectral Sailor. Got very close. Yeah, opponent ended up at 1, so the wand could have done some work there. But who knows what would have happened had we kept the wand. Alright, GG's opponents. Very interesting game. And we explode. <laughs> All right, five and three overall, pretty happy with how the draft went. Got to play a lot of sweet games. Got comboed out twice by the Scholar of the Ages, which, yeah, you know, it's probably one of the best cards in the format. So got to lose a couple of games to it eventually. But uh, yeah, overall, pretty interesting format. Definitely a lot more interactive than the previous iterations of Omniscience Draft. So if your complaint with the previous versions of Omniscience Draft was just uh, those games where you just don't get to do anything and lose on turn zero, and those are a little addressed with uh, M20 Omniscience Draft, at least. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.